remember my dad was telling me a story that his friend or somebody he knows was uh, in Russia. Oh yeah, that was our friend. Yeah, his friend actually. He's Russian? No, no, Polish. But oh. uh, ah, he was in Russia. He's kind of like half Ukrainian, half Polish. Really. Like he's got Ukrainian roots, but he lives in Poland. It was uh -huh. tricky. Fucking like 10 kilometers to the border. Right? Ukrainian Karpaty. Uh -huh. Mountains. Beautiful to a town, eh? Actually, in that town, uh, Russians, uh, after the World War II, they were occupying it. It was not supposed to be part of Poland. But they discovered that there is uh, close to where I live, close to Lublin. Uh -huh. Poland was more into the Ukraine, like about 100 and 20 kilometers or something like that, further, maybe 100 kilometers. But the Russians discovered that there is coal in there, underground. So. Oh, yeah. actually, it was uh, Ukrainian territory, right? Yeah, yeah. But th uh, then it was Russian. So well, yeah. Lemke, Lemke, you know, right? And then, uh, yeah, yeah. So they said, uh, okay, guys, we'll give you. Yeah, exactly, Lemke and Boyki. Yeah. And uh, they said, they, uh, we're gonna give you this land, and we're gonna take that land. Oh. Because they discovered that there's uh, mineral uh, coal under the ground. Right? Just, just swap. Yeah. And uh, that was in 1947, two years after the war. And my friend, my dad's friend was telling uh, us, telling me that the Russians, before they leaving, like they, uh, houses were left, like, completely destroyed. You know, they were using uh, doors for burning, you know. Uh, like Indians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, worse than Indians. Shit, you know, they would shit inside the houses, inside the rooms, you know. No way. Yeah, and it was, everything was devastated. Like they were using even wood frames from the windows, you know, to, to burn uh, in, the, in the stoves. You know, shit, mess everywhere. They were shitting in like the rooms, you know, and stuff. Into Ukraine and then back into Ustrzyki. Uh -huh. It 
was from Przemysl to Ustrzyki. So this part of Ukraine has the same size the railroad. Uh, they have two. They have dual, two, two different types, yeah. In the same yeah. place? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I remember they were changing something also, like when we stopped on the border, it was quite an experience because uh, it would stop, the train would stop on the border mm -hmm. and soldiers would come in, like Russian soldiers. Check, check they would walk everything, check everything. And uh, I remember one girl had the, the girl that was with us had the window open. Uh -huh. <coughs> and uh, the commander says, uh, uh, no, the Zakrit, yeah, Zakrit. Zakrit, no. Zakrit, no, yeah. Oh, no, oh, no. Zark. Oh, no, but you move. Oh, but you move. Oh, but you move. Oh, but you move. And uh, at the doors, where the doors are to the to get into the, uh, <coughs> what do you call them, the, uh, the wagons, you know, where people enter uh, the train. The glory. Enter, enter door. Yeah, they had soldiers standing, you know, and watching, make sure that nobody's throwing anything out the window. No propaganda, no, no anything diversion, you know. They have glasses like this, and I remember we went uh, outside on the corridor with my friend to have a cigarette, and we came up to the soldier, and I took cigarettes, and I said to him, "The I don't talk. Не надо, не надо. А так бы закрыл, да? Да. Не надо, не надо. Так и знаешь... Скерд, да. Скерд. Не надо, не надо. Фак. Закуришь? Не надо, не надо. Фак. It was quite experience, you know, because on our side it was more freedom, you know. It still was communist, but it was more freedom. We didn't see anything like that. It was like a circus, you know, to, to see. Oh, and they were walking on the roofs too, like checking. Under the train, over the train, you know. Terrible. Then after Perestroika, then it was like no but more. Wait, you had uh, also communism in the port. Oh yeah. But it was like kind of different than in the Ukraine. Well, we had more freedom, you know. Uh, freedom of speech, like we were able to say what we think. So like, you know, like like in China now. Uh, maybe. Makes it the democracy and communism. Yeah, something like that. But still, it was bad. You know, like you had to maybe oh, straight. Uh, yeah, straight. I think is faster. You had to, you know, be careful what you said when there was uh, police. You know, and police officer and a lot of things, a lot of power. You know. Maybe it's in here. Now we have. We had the. Uh, in our village, there was two. Uh, it was called like the reserve of the uh, of the mechanized police force. Mm -hmm. and those were guys that were used when there were demonstrations, because in Poland there was a lot of demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys that went with uh, with uh, Big gun. with guns and tear gas, you know, and and uh, you know we're beating the people. Eh? The, the yeah, there was two of them. One. I remember they hanged the two of his dogs in my village, and they had a sign that uh, you're next. 